been a while since we made a video about our chickens and a lot of comments saying, hey, where are the updates? So this video will be about that. Uh, to be perfectly honest, part of the reason why I haven't done a video in a little while is that the scene, the chicken scene overall hasn't felt super thrilling to share. We've had really, uh, a lot of you in the Northeast know what I'm talking about. We've had some really intense snows uh, you know, below zero for a little while. I've talked about that in some of the other videos. And I've been kind of shying away from documenting the chickens in that during that spell, the chickens for the most part stayed in their coop, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, you know, I'm not thrilled with <laughs> the state of the coop. We need some work on that. And for a while, the whole compost in this space uh, seized up and froze, well, most of it did. And just now we're finally coming on the other side of that with enough time. In fact, the snow helped to insulate the compost on the outside of this space. On the west side, where the wind comes in, I banked a whole lot of leaves and compost before the heavy snows. You can see I pulled some of the snow away from this uh, tunnel so it didn't collapse. It bent in just a little bit, which I also wasn't excited to share. <laughs> the video where I talked about these cattle panels holding up under heavy snow is still a fair representation, but you can see where it bowed in. I think more than anything, the weight of the compost was doing that. But this uh, load of compost under a blanket of snow was enough insulation to help the compost on the inside thaw out enough so that we could add sprouts, five gallon buckets soaked grain uh, onto this and you can see they're eating that and enjoying. So we're on the other side of what was kind of a little bit of a less than thrilling moment. Let me shush up and let you just watch them eat for a minute. Hello special friend. doesn't need to be in there. So this morning I came through and the compost that's down in here against that wall of external leaves and insulation is pretty piping hot, probably 60, 70 degrees. Not super hot for a compost, but piping hot for what we've been going through. And there are certainly some pockets where it's absolutely rock solid frozen on the far end. So I need to think about insulating that but really nice sprouts for later January and pretty much an arctic blast. Next week we're expecting crazy deep cold. Most of the U.S. is going to get whacked, it looks like. And so today we're going to try to buy some hay bales to insulate the coop a bit more, give them more fodder to enjoy. I prefer hay over straw for a lot of reasons. Less spray and more actual food for them. But they're having a nice day today. 15 degrees out. Let's look in the coop. I'm a little embarrassed to look in there, but let's just go ahead and do it. The theme you'll see with this coop is a fair amount of makeshift um, addressing air leaks as we got colder and colder. The coop has served us well for almost five years with the basic design, but it's it airs on the side of ventilation over air sealing because we don't want them to um, it's a lot warmer in here right now. It's not that bad. I just turned some compost. We've been stuck with this, the leaves collected from the fall, which overall are great, but they got moist enough that I really want to get some very dry, very loose bedding for our friends coming into this colder time next week. But you can see for those hens that don't want to leave, we're giving them sprouted grains and the five gallon buckets have fluid on top so after two or three days of resting inside and sprouting, we pour off that fluid into containers and the chickens like that as much as they like milk, which is really nice. It probably has a lot of good probiotics. Um, so I think I'm going to be redesigning the roosts in here. This has been kind of adding on as we got more and more chickens. I think we need to lay this out again. I got some great ideas from folks. Um, so I'm going to try to implement those where they're actually protected more from the wind. 
But you can see some pretty janky jobs here of taking leaf bags and stapling them up and it, it works well enough. There's not a lot of airflow, but the winds that we've been getting have been up to 30 miles per hour with zero Fahrenheit is a raw deal. It's just hard to design for that. The other thing that's on order here is I have to build better nesting boxes. They stopped laying a few months ago, uh, more or less, and so it disincentivized updating the nesting boxes. We had some old wooden ones in here, so they just started laying in the corner recently, and I owe it to them to make a better nesting situation. So kind of just showing you the raw back end of this, the elements that we're not incredibly proud of, and part of the reason why we haven't been yelling to the mountains about our chicken composting. It's just been so cold and so rough that it's been survival mode and keeping them going more than, um, you know, showing you all these amazing innovations and all that. But they're all alive. They all seem to be healthy enough. Um, they're, they're doing, they're doing well. I'm, I'm happy with who they are and where they are overall. You can see one's choosing to lay an egg out here. This, for some reason, this random box where we're, we use for insulation on the outside of the coop, the barred rocks like to lay in it. So, uh, folks have some designs for really nice nesting boxes that can accommodate 50 plus hens. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you've got some designs and plans you want to share. That's something I want to build sooner than later so that they're more comfortable and have privacy and can enjoy that. One other thing, just to be full transparency, for the first time in the almost five years of raising chickens, we bought feed. So in a way I can feel pretty proud that we haven't purchased feed up until now. We did so, well, so we got organic pellets. The good news that I found is that when we put these out, they do eat them, but they absolutely do not prefer these over other food. Although she's showing me otherwise. If I throw them down, it's new, so they go for it. But when we put sprouts out or we put compost out, they absolutely prefer that. But when we got into that frozen spell, everything was locked up uh, and they, they were stuck in the coop. The dried pellets just seemed like, hey, let's just get them, get them through this and see what happens. Um, we bought a bag, we bought two bags in total, and it's really driven the point home of how critical it is that the composting system is the core of this project. If we were to just buy certified organic layer feed for this many hens, in the winter with our old four plus year old hens, God, we'd be spending six to ten dollars a dozen on eggs. <laughs> so I feel sorry for all the folks that just buy feed. It, the, buying the feed has helped me really appreciate the fundamentals of this composting system. And this will be the last bag we buy. Uh, we'll go back fully into getting the compost running. I gotta close the lid, watch your butt. So the next video we should have some nicer roosts. We should have the coop decked out with some really deep, bone dry, insulative hay or maybe sawdust if we can't find hay. And I'll plan to continue to insulate and bulk up the compost in this high tunnel. And then we can show off the system and say how great it is. But it's nice to show you the raw moments, the transitional moments where it's functioning well enough, everybody's alive and okay, but not, you know, blowing your minds with how the performance is. So um, that's kind of like the honest update of where the chicken system is. Thanks for watching.
Sprouted organic grain and sushi rice, and she's eating old dried leaves.